Well, as you know, on this show, we have guests who come to discuss various things happening in the country, and especially the upcoming elections. And as you have, throughout the week, you know, there's been a lot of noise on the Twitter spaces, on Instagram, on TV, on different WhatsApp groups as to the, should I say, eligibility of Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, the APC presidential candidate. If it's not drug money today, tomorrow is bala bala blue. You know, tomorrow, next tomorrow is, is his health concerns. Next, you know, is also his age. You know, and different, different things keep coming up into the picture, which makes us wonder, is he really eligible? Is he really the kind of leader that we want for Nigeria? Or is it just business as usual? So I have today with me in the show a very um, eloquent guest, a spirited Tinubu supporter. Um, he's a civil engineer by profession and an ardent politician. He's an APC card carrying member. His name is um, Moknun Ali Oluafui. Yeah, thank you, Latif. You're very welcome on the show. Thank you. Yes, it's good to have you here. So let, let, I want to start from that bala bala bulu. Let's take it from there. What exactly was that? What was going on there? You know, because from what we see, I saw the video, and it looks like the man just literally was off. He literally went absent. I don't know what was going on in his, with him. He, he just confused everything, and he didn't know what to say. Yeah, he literally you. murmured like a toddler. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. you know, we're in a, <clears throat> we're a generation of, we're a generation of um, social media content. And I think that we should be happy that every week we have content from Ashwaji, but that's on a light handed. So, seriously speaking, um, Ashwaji is not someone who, who is blessed with um, very, very excellent auditory skills. Um, but the good thing is that he has been compensated for that deficiency in his mental capacity and brilliance. So, if you have been watching Ashwaji's videos over the years, He's someone who speaks very slowly, uh, speaks in parables, uses um, figurative expressions, and is a man of little words. So with respect to that video, um, we've been seeing the 10 seconds videos that have been going around. You know, and I understand that we need content. But however, when we are speaking to serious issues, I think we should be able co to contextualize issues. And I think that um, perhaps people should go and verify watch the full video, understand the context, and then we can come out, uh, come out to have our analysis um, of what we think of the video. But uh, my own personal analysis of the video is that um, Ashwaji was saying that uh, he, was, he was in a town hall meeting, and he was saying that uh, this is the kind of town hall meetings that we should be holding. And I think that um, um, he's very correct. You know, you should be speaking to specific audiences, speaking to their own challenges, having feedbacks from them, you know, in, in, let, let them interrogate your ideas. And then, you know, rather than the Bulabalu, Bulabalu, gibberish town hall meeting, you know, we saw the town hall meeting that ended up in the almost fisticuff between a presidential uh, candidate, one particular presidential candidate, and the first lawmaker that got his shirt torn in the House of Assembly. So, you know, that, those, those are not town hall meetings. You know, those are Bula Balu, Bala Balu. So, that, so we are saying that the, Balu, the Bala Balu was like a synonym it's for a, gibberish, it's basically. A perfect description. It's a perfect description of what happened at the purported uh, last town hall meeting. It's okay, a, so let's, let's it, even assume that's the case. It's and, and, I, and I refuse to concede that to you. But let's assume that that's the case. What about PD, APC? God bless PD, APC. What, what, what was that? Did, did he forget? Thank you. Is our president. Much going to be a forgetful president? Our president has never shown to be a forgetful president. In fact, if you follow the build-up from um, the primaries, from when he declared his intention to run, to post-primaries, to pre-campaigns, and now to how he's been holding his campaigns, you would have seen that um, this was well thought out. You will see a very, very high level of preparedness there. So you can have slip of tongue. And, and the good thing is that you know, compared to a candidate that came on air, you know, to say $1.2 billion divided by 30 million Ghanaians, 
is $40 million, $41 million per citizen. You know, he's not even able to correct himself at the show on live TV. He's not even able to release a public statement explaining himself. Now, we have an Ashwaju that was almost saying, God bless PD. And then he remember, oh, no, this is not PD. Perhaps he had... How do you forget your own child? So, so... Something that you have nursed, you have catered for over the years. You suddenly forget it at the... At the, at the so, like I said, it's not as if he forgot. It was a slip of tongue. And mind you, mind you, if you have been following the uh, <clears throat> political space, we know the five PDP governors, you know, we know that... Uh, They've been having a lot of meetings, you know, even with other candidates. And perhaps so Ajuadu has God's blessing. a lot of meetings, with, and they need God's blessings to come back to the APC. So for me, those are non-issues, but they are social media No, see, I mean, you can say that social media content and all, but these things matter because I'll tell you why. For instance, we, we've had a Yaradua mm. who, God bless his soul, mm. died on the seat. Yeah. Now, we've also had a Buhari who in his first six months could not appoint ministers. Yeah. He spent basically the first term traveling back and forth London on health ground. Yeah. And you know, and the, the country was basically left an auto drive and yeah. within his carcass, we we're running the things. So we don't want to have that same issue. And we're seeing signs. Yes. You're seeing signs. The other time we saw him, he avoided the peace accord committee, the mm. peace accord signing. Mm. He said he showed himself in London, he was on a on the bicycle, yeah. you know, trying to show, <coughs> trying to prove beyond the doubt that, that he is healthy. Yeah. If you are healthy, we will know. Yes. Nobody has ever caught a question, for instance, the health of Peter Obi mm. or Kwan Kwaso mm. or Esho mm. Even an Atiku. Yeah. Even the people say that, he, but he, we've not seen, we've not had any reason to question his health, mm. except as you are. Yeah. So, um, you, is the man hale and hearty, is he hale and hearty enough to lead the country, to steer the country into the right direction? Um, I think it was in Delta today. Um, um, yesterday, day before yesterday, no, earlier this week he was in Plateau. And I don't think I've seen him sitting down, you know, um, addressing people at the rally. So um, I don't know what people have been saying to say he's not healthy, but I'm not seeing that. In fact, I'm seeing someone whose work rate is very high. He's the uh, Makelele. You know, you, you, know, the, you know the way Makelele works. So I'm seeing Makelele in Ashwa. Do you see someone? I think he's one of an attacker, actually. Yeah. No, Makelele is a defensive. Yeah, I think he's one of an attacker. No, so no. But I'm, I'm oh, looking at the work oh. rate. The work rate. So he has a very high work rate for someone um, of his age. For a 70 year old man, you hold strategy sessions with your team members, your media team, your political team, various support groups, and you are still moving from state to state. Um, for me, is Hill and Hetty. Very, 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 very healthy. Very healthy. To run so their I have project. no issues with him. Now, for people who saying that um, they are seeing signs of um, you know, something similar to what happened to Yaradwa. Now, we also had a, um, um, what's it called? Muritala, that was also assassinated while as the head of state. So mm. nothing in life is guaranteed. Um, so many people that thought that they were going to outlive others have also left. So for me, except, and the Constitution actually even makes provision for that. So except that you see, that we all see that this man cannot even stand at rallies, cannot even speak at rallies, cannot even attend rallies, then I don't, I don't for me, those are non-issues. And I think there are distractions. And let me tell you why there are distractions. All of these distractions should have come earlier, before the campaigns. He's not distracting us. No. So you are the ones trying to distract people that want to speak to the issues. And I see a well orchestrated media strategy from all of the, the two major political opponents. You know, you, one has been accused of plagiarism. The other one, you know, has said that his party... Who are the two major political opponents? Yeah. Eh? Who are the two major political opponents? We know them. Atiku and uh, Peter Obi. Do you consider Peter Obi a major candidate in this election? Of course. On social media. Why not? Why not? So the other one, you know, has said that um, his party does not have the um, authority to release manifesto on behalf of the party. And that any manifesto not released by him is, is fake. So, and, and we, this is time to speak to issues. No problem. We will get out to the issues yes. today and we will just break it down for our viewers. To see. Yes.